Car shopping can be confusing. Terms like dealer price, list price, invoice. True Car shows you what other people paid for the car you want. TrueCar.com, new or used. Uh, by the way, this just came out. Uh, Shams Sharanya, who is a young NBA report, uh, reporter, excellent, we've had him on the show, said, um, this is very interesting, Timberwolves all-star Jimmy Butler called a players-only meeting today, airing his feelings toward the situation and management per league sources. Butler yesterday was screaming at everybody. They've canceled practice today in Minnesota. In Minnesota. So Jimmy Butler basically players-only meeting. It's just a mess. This franchise has good players. Uh, Jimmy Butler doesn't want to be a leader. He wants to run somewhere else. By the way, when he was in Chicago, he couldn't get along with Rondo, and he couldn't get along with D-Wade. Everybody gets along with D-Wade. This was Jimmy yesterday explaining himself after he blew up at practice and yelled at the GM and the players and the coaches. Here was Jimmy Butler yesterday. I was honest. Was I brutally honest? Yes. But I, I think that that's the problem. Everybody's so scared to be honest with one another. If you didn't like the way that I handled myself in, in, in practice... One of the players come up to me. Somebody say something. Anybody. I'm not going to take it offense. It's not personal. And that's all I was out there doing was competing, playing hard, doing what I'm supposed to do on the basketball court. I just want everybody to be happy. I want to win. I'm sorry if I go about it the wrong way. I really do apologize. All right. Well, uh, they canceled practice today. He's meeting with all the players. And it can be, you know, again, it, it, I, my source, who I trust implicitly, said uh, two years ago at the Olympics, there was a lot of egos, Carmelo, DeMarcus Cousins, Kyrie Irving, Draymond Green, and he was the one guy who didn't fit. He had the worst field goal percentage. He averaged five points a game, and guys didn't, like, connect with him. He may think he connected. They didn't like him. He was an odd fit. So we'll keep our eye on it. Uh, all right, best for last. After almost three hours, Colin apparently hasn't gotten to the point yet. Quit holding out on us, cowherd. It's the best for last. Joy, we've been together on this show for a couple of months. I've said before, I root for drama. Mm -hmm. I like drama. Uh, the Golden State Warriors, when Kevin Durant went to the Warriors, they played the Lakers last night. Uh, and by the way, the starters played all through the first half. Durant, Steph, Clay, LeBron, uh, you know, all the guys. Brandon Ingram. And I said that I thought it was good because I think it would be a talking point. It's Jim Harbaugh to Michigan. It's uh, Tom Brady went to the Cowboys. It's, uh, you know, it's Conor McGregor. Big brand's a big brand. Yeah, big star going to a big brand is good. And so, but, you know, the Warriors have turned off a lot of people. I got the best. Uh, I get mail. People still write me letters every day, and the company every couple of weeks comes in with a boatload of mail to my office. I got my favorite letter ever. Uh, this morning from a kid in Columbus, Ohio. I'm not going to give you his name. This was the letter. It said, a Dear Mr. Cowherd, screw the Warriors. <laughs> that was the letter from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, one of my favorite. But I will say this. I don't understand the hate for the Warriors. I think they're fascinating. Um, I think they're interesting. I think they're good guys. We, we want our basketball players to not be obsessed with money or shots. We want our basketball players to want to play with great players, and that's exactly what the Warriors did, and I watched them again last night. I don't understand the hate for the Lakers either because they're going to be interesting, and we're, we're in L.A. anyway, the home of Hollywood. If you made a movie trailer for the Lakers, tell me this wouldn't be interesting. Coming this fall, the single greatest player of his generation. The guy who once blew in that other guy's ear. An NBA champion who's 80% likely to get ejected in the first game. A number two overall pick who may or may not know how to shoot a basketball. And the biggest name in sports in Lithuania. This October, LeBron James, Lance Stevenson, Rajon Rondo, Lonzo Ball, LeVar Ball, Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram, Javel McGee, Kadavius Caldwell Pope, Magic Johnson, Luke Walton, Jeannie Bott, and three-time Academy Award winner Jack Nicholson starring Lakers Dozen. Tell me Pretty good. it wouldn't be entertaining. Looks Sports. like good content. Sports should be entertaining. Now, maybe I'm saying that because of my position and what I do for a living, but I think the Warriors will be really fun this year. I think the Celtics will be fun. The growth of the Sixers, the Rockets adding Mello, Paul George and Westbrook. You got six Lakers. You got about six or seven interesting teams. Season starts Tuesday. And it's like the NFL. The reason they implement these rules to the quarterback, because teams are more interesting when the starting quarterback is standing upright and not hurt. And fans have shown they like more offense. 
that's I think fantasy sports is a big part of that. It is. I do like more points. Listen, I prefer more points. Here's the other thing. You know, when I when Tiger Woods first came on the scene, I was a local sportscaster in Portland, Oregon. And he burst onto the scene, and I would literally, I was a local sportscaster, I wouldn't show any other golfers. I was like a little Phil Mickelson. If, if, if I did golf highlights, it was all Tiger. And a guy came up to me one time, and he's like, you guys, you, you media people are all Tiger. Have you seen the galleries around Tiger Woods? He literally quit a golf event in Colorado, and the golf event folded. Like he said, I'm not going to play that event, and it folded. Did you watch the tournament a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, he was like the golf messiah. Like, it's just, why fight interesting? A LeBron to the Lakers is going to be significantly more interesting than 99% of the game. Well, I think people get fatigued if it's not their team. Right. So they get tired of hearing about how great another team that they don't necessarily care about is. But that's just the way that it works. Like, we don't make this stuff up. And LeBron all- James is the greatest player on the planet right now, currently playing, and he has just gone to Los Angeles, the Lakers. And he, did you see his reaction last night after he hit the shot at half court? He's theatrical. He's having fun. This was the moment of the game last night against the Golden State Warriors. LeBron going to fire it up. It'll count if it goes. And it goes. A three to end the half for LBJ. Oh. <laughs> LeBron looked at Dalvin for about 20 seconds after he left his hand. He said, yeah, I like it, and the crowd likes it as well. By the way, I didn't talk about the Lakers last four years when they weren't interesting. Uh, I don't think the Cowboys right now are terribly interesting. I don't I don't know. They're not. They're not. I mean, the only time we talk about the Cowboys on this show, I won't. The, I, the Yankees now are more interesting. I don't talk Michigan football. I didn't talk it for years. Now they have Harbaugh. They're more interesting. Well, the only time we talk about the Cowboys now is it's when one of their players dysfunction. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I, I think it's going to be fun. I, I do think the Lakers have some strengths. I think they're young, coachable, energetic, have the best player in the world. Uh, have some really nice defenders. They'll be a very good team defense. They'll rebound well. And I do think, I really think the key is LeBron's going to average 27 and a half. I think Brandon Ingram's going to pop to about 22 points a game, 23. Um, and I think that's going to be your team. It's going to be LeBron, Brandon Ingram, and then a bunch of other guys on any given night can score 17 points. Kyle Kuzma, uh, Lance Stevenson, uh, Michael Beasley, Alonzo Ball. But it's going to be LeBron, and then it's going to be Brandon Ingram. And Brandon came into this league one year out of Duke. He's a really good player. He's a baby, and he's got a lot of growth left. And, I, you know, I watched him last night. He came into this game. He came into the NBA, Brandon Ingram. And i like, dude, you need to eat a ham sandwich. You weigh like 80 pounds. And I watched him his second year, and I'm like, okay. He's not quite there, but he's getting there. I know it's only been exhibition season, but I've watched him all exhibition season. And I'm like, oh, okay, Brandon's ready to pop. He looks more, he looks thicker. He looks ready to go. He's just, like, when you watch Brandon Ingram last night, you're like, okay, that's good. That's a guy that's going to average 20 in the NBA. You can see it right now. He's going to be the second best Laker player on the team this year. Tomorrow we're packed. Tomorrow we've got a great show. We've got our Blazing Five. I am calling for upsets, and I absolutely love my picks. Peter King. We don't get Peter King on Fridays. Brian Cox, who called the New York Giants crap in preseason, was right. He'll be joining us to talk about the Philadelphia Eagles and the New York Giants. That game is tonight on Fox. Um, and again, go to my Twitter account, yell and scream at me if what Odell Beckham said was wrong when you watch the Giants tonight. He is holding back the team. If you can bench Peyton Manning for Brock Osweiler, you can certainly publicly discuss Eli Manning if you're Odell Beckham Jr. I want to thank Chris Broussard, Greg Cosell, Michael Rappaport, and Bucky Brooks. Radio listeners, see you tomorrow. TV guys back in a second with Speak for Yourself. In Los Angeles, this is The Herd. Go to battle as the Gophers try and slow down.